just a quick look here. Finally got my uh, Pogo Plug V4 hooked up with a new hard drive, which is actually running uh, quite at room temperature, maybe a couple degrees warmer. Um, I was having some issues. I had to wrestle with this earlier this week, so uh, today I finally got it taken care of, and now I am running delicious, delicious Debian Wheezy with backports and kernel 3.14 instead of running Arch Linux ARM, thanks to some very helpful stuff on a couple of different websites. Um, <clears throat> next, what I've got my BeagleBone Black that I picked up at Radio Shack for 24 bucks. All while they were going out of business. Doing absolutely nothing at this point right now, because I don't have anything for it to do at the moment. But that's just sitting here, nice and quiet, with a little tiny 16 gig micro SD card, unadulterated 100 megabit access, screaming fast, and its own dedicated 5 volt power supply at 3 amps. Because why not? Uh, over here, I've got my Dell Optiplex 760 Ultra Small Form Factor, which is in the shell of what was the SX280. So, it's the, the upgrade, and that's going to finally, uh, probably get retired. Just a quick cut there, I had to switch batteries, because this one was finally giving up the ghost. Uh, it just kept on flashing the dead battery sign, so... I decided to just cut it short and see what would happen. Um, yeah. I probably shouldn't have done it like this, since this looks pretty, well, just childish. Looking back at it now, uh, a couple of years later, after I've uh, first purchased it. But it is always a good idea to make sure that your battery has been properly documented down someplace that it has been replaced. In this case, I started a list here of when the battery was replaced, and the date, and where I bought the battery. Not sure what I said on the left hand side there. I can't really read that too well. There we go. 5-22-2012 from Batteries Plus. Okay. Oh yeah, that was the one that I got from, uh... I got that from the Batteries Plus on Route 10 in East Hanover. Whippany, East Hanover, give or take, around that area. Uh, and I ended up getting a... I, I bought it because it was on sale, not knowing that I could get a cheaper one on eBay. I have to probably cycle this battery soon because it hasn't been cycled since um, about November of 2012 when we first had the power outage because of Sandy. Hmm. Here we have a D-Link DIR825, <coughs> which is a wireless router, not running anything uh, special. Wireless has been disabled, and up here is uh, the old um, WNR2K version 2 that I have uh, had for a number of years so far. This was the main router. It is now the main access point. I disabled wireless on, <coughs> excuse me, on the D-Link for a very good reason, so that I one. Uh, I could take advantage of the gigabit uh, for just just for what I was using it for, and two, not having the wireless slow down the gigabit because it seems that it can't do both. I'm not sure why that is. <clears throat> the clicking that you're hearing is the head uh, picking up and tr uh, retracting on the hard drive that's in the DBA down here. This is actually a fake door. It does not actually go to anything. There is a second drive bay uh, adapter in there right now that you can't see. Best uh, burglary deterrent? Maybe not, but it'll fool anybody that goes past it real quick. Um, 
so this is still the main access point. And actually, I don't know why it's sitting flat on top of here. It should be sitting at an angle like this so that both of them get proper airflow. Um, <clears throat> I'm not too concerned about what happens with the D-Link. It's going to get replaced soon, I hope. I'm working on it at least. The Netgear is going to remain the main access point in its current uh, horizontal diagonal position. It's all heat synced up inside and it's been rock solid since I put it uh, back into uh, commission. So it's really just going to stay this way for now. And I have some wires going off that. One of them goes to my BeagleBone Black, the other one goes to one of the first international computer GE3 boxes in the corner. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on in the corner. It's sitting on top of the TV over here. And I'm going to be doing some testing with that and seeing how much power it uses compared to the Occuplex 760. But I already know that the Pogo Plug is going to win the contest for lowest amount of power used. Yeah, you just can't beat uh, a 12 volt, 2 amp, pretty much power supply compared to. I don't even know how many watts that's supposed to be putting out. But I'll tell you what, that sucker's warm. I don't know if that's by design or if that's just because it's very inefficient. So, just a warning to anybody that has these. Yes, mine actually does get a little warm, and I'm not exactly sure if that should be the case, or if it's just getting warm for no reason, and it's just actually very inefficient. I'd love to see someone uh, do some efficiency testing on one of these, but <coughs> I don't know if that's even possible. From what I understand, it uses a very basic uh, uh, ATX-style pattern. Uh, it, it, it's very... It's what you would call bog standard, pretty much. It's all standard ATX style power sources going into something. People actually use these external bricks to power um, external graphics cards with an adapter. And there's supposedly a sense pin in one of them that tells the power, it tells the computer, hey, I'm connected, you can turn on now. And aside from that, it's pretty much a somewhat standard, but it's not really. It's more of a proprietary standard between Dell and a couple other companies. So, I'd love to see some efficiency testing done on one of these because I do not have the tools to do them. Um, and also, just uh, if I could find my other one, which I probably have down here. Yep, there it is down there at the bottom. I gotta see how, uh, if I can, uh, fig I, I don't want to see destructive testing done to it, but I do want to see some efficiency tests done. Um, <clears throat> my cable modem all nice and dusty because I don't clean it, because I'm never up here this high. And that's been having some issues over the past week. I've had to revert to using my, um, my Freedom Pop access point little photon square thing because the internet has gone out a couple of times and it's probably because of the cold weather snaps or it could be because of something else happening in the area but it has gone out a total of two times within the past month this is a first from what i understand our tv also went out so it's not the cable modem's fault i gotta figure that out note to self buy more of these stickers not that sticker, that sticker. The Sanyo camera actually looks like it's a decent camera with this big ass, uh, what is this? This is a tele, this is a super wide macro lens made by a company called Titanium or something along those lines. But it actually looks like it's a good camera, but no, it's just a cheapo Ching Chinese camera. Yeah, wow. I've got a couple here, uh, and this one right here which goes straight in, uh, goes over to the other side of the room here, and that plugs into the wall where I have a little Zixel, uh, what is it, it's a Ethernet over power adapter, 
And that brings me to the basement. And in the basement, I have a couple of things, like my computer and some other things. And they are all connected into... Uh, well, they're not connected into... They're, they're just kind of sitting there doing nothing for the most part sometimes. But I have enough stuff working down there. Um, there's a wireless router that provides internet access for half of the house because I have uh, chicken wire and plaster walls. And there is my computer. There is a couple of other Ethernet cables running around my uh, desk so that I can plug in computers that I'm working on. And there's an entire mess of wires next to my desk that I need to take care of. Well, next to my chair. So, I don't know how many network cables I have uh, flopping around in there, but they're definitely not connected. Um, <clears throat> so, without further ado, let's go down there a little bit. Here's the 24 port switch in the basement, which only has a handful of ports being used right now. It's a Linksys Etherfast 3124. It is a fanless switch, which is why it's down here being used in, well, in this area. I have a Dell branded 24 port switch, which is Gigabit, which I'm hopefully going to be placing this with. But I first need to get a fan that doesn't sound like it has a uh, ton of rocks in it. So once I accomplish that, then this will get switched out and I will have glorious gigabit all throughout my wired house. Well, what little of it is wired. But we'll change that because... Yes, that's right. I have a couple of these. They are Netgear Powerline AV 500s. And I will not let you focus in on that. All I know is that they are rated for theoretical maximum of 500 megabits over uh, uh, over your normal power lines. The ones that I currently have in there, which are Zixels, are only rated to a the theoretical maximum of 200 megabits. So that gives me about 50 megs, give or take, nominally. So I'm hoping that adding these into the picture, and at least into the mix, will up that to about, oh, I don't know, hmm, excuse me, it's a little on the uh, late side here, it's about 2 a.m., uh, probably someplace within 70, 80 megabits a second, uh, just, you know, standard base, uh, base max. And maybe about 90 on a good day. And I wouldn't expect this to get anywhere up to 120, but I'm willing to be surprised. I, I'm, I'm open to surprises. Okay? Okay, buddy? Can you do 120? Because my internet connection maxes out at about, give or take, 125. And the upload speed is still down around 11. Nothing to really worry about running on the pogo plug which is now running debian Download speed of 119.1 megabits per second. So just a little bit over 12 megabytes down. And just a little bit over 1 megabit up if it decides to ever focus. link in the description. I was going to use this in the Compact Presario 700 US laptop that I have upstairs, which I did actually purchase an AMD Athlon 4 to replace the Sempron that it came with. No, actually not a Sempron, it came with a Duron. 
Duron is even worse. But it turns out that the Compaq only has 100 megabit internal, thanks to one of the industry's leading standard 100 megabit uh, network uh, card adapters. It has an inbuilt 8139C, thankfully. So, I'm happy to say that although it won't win any, uh, win any speed awards, it definitely wins a couple of awards on having really good hardware to run Linux on. Oops, sorry if my finger is covering the mic a little bit there. Um, it's about five minutes uh, after I was yawning and stuff. I've had some coffee. I'm feeling a little better. Uh, you know, stuff. So, yeah, I kind of wanted to use this. This Dell piece of junk has an intercell wireless thing in inside a Prism 54 base. I sort of wrote on there what the kind of chip was so that, but it's sort of wiping off because the marker is a little aged, a couple years. Um, that was supposed to get used inside a box with my BeagleBone Black, and I was going to use that as a sort of access point just for the hell of it, see what it could do. That's a really old Dell uh, external wireless adapter for a desktop. It's based on, it's an intercell chip, uh, Prism 54, and uh, I think it's an ISL 3880 or something. So you need, like, very special firmware for it, and you have to download it manually, and you have to put it in a specific directory, and I have to find the form post every single damn time I want to use this thing with a Linux box. So I figured, okay, let's see if it'll run on ARM. And then I find out that... Oh look, it's too long to fit in the thing. Okay, let's take it out of the plastic enclosure. No! Because on the top, on the top, underneath this plastic, there is actual pieces of antenna that are molded into the plastic, and that is very counterproductive to what I want to do. So we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I took this picture of my setup just uh, tonight, about a couple hours ago, with uh, this camera. This is a Canon uh, PowerShot A75 and it seems to have a little bit of uh, some issues as far as getting the picture to show all the time. It has some uh, some like color banding happening on the left hand side here sometimes. It's not happening right now but if you shake it a little bit sometimes it just happens to the uh, image sensor starts to go a little nutsy, especially in low light situations. The, the thing just sucks. Also in high light situations too. But I think it has something to do with the uh, compact flash card being in, because now with no compact flash card in, it's not showing any of the symptoms. So I'm wondering if there's a dodgy connector someplace, and the compact flash and the sensor are using the same circuit to get. Uh, power, maybe. I do wonder. Yep. Something else I'm going to have to do a video on soon is uh, my Sony D5 here. Now, very used and abused after five years of ownership. Five, six years of ownership. And being just banged around and kicked around and all the sorts of stuff. Even though this thing is pretty much a collector's item because it was made in 1985 and it is Sony's first... Uh, well, you can consider it a portable CD player, seeing as it has this big-ass battery board on the back. It takes uh, 60 AA, uh, 68 uh, batteries. Uh, one and a half volts. You, you know what I mean. Uh, the fact that it uses uh, some analog... Uh, well, it, it uses some sort of circuit that's like analog stuff to convert the di digital to analog or something along those lines. And... It's really weird, but the circuit is weird, and it's the same as what's in Sony's first CD player, and audiophiles seem to like that. So these are worth uh, having around. And the audio quality isn't too bad. I like it. So this I'm going to have to make a video on very soon, 
including some uh, audio samples and stuff compared to, say, something along the lines of this CD player, which someone has drawn some sort of weird symbol on the top of, and has no FM, AM, TV, weather band stuff happening for it here, and is actually an MP3 CD player, uh, believe it or not. So, I'm going to have to put it up against this, because this has some interesting bass settings and some very weird quirks to it. And I'll have to also definitely have to put it up against this, which is a March 1996 Panasonic... SLSW202 anti-shock CD player. It features XBS bass. Uh, I don't know what the mash thing was. I think that was supposed to... something anti-shock something. I, I don't know. Shockwave. Very 90s. Very, like, 90s yellow. Maybe 80s yellow, 90s yellow. This is one of those products that you can't find any of these anymore for a reasonable price. I just so happened to find one of these for three bucks over at Goodwill, and I said, screw it, I'm buying it, and I bought it. Uh, so I'm going to have to definitely put it up against this, uh, mostly because this also has the anti-shock stuff, and I want to just do a demonstration of how primitive it was, and how good quality this uh, CD player actually puts out. It also has line out and uh, DC in in the back. I'm not sure if this will charge uh, AA batteries though. Uh, you know, rechargeables. That's something else I should take a look into too in a later video. Anybody want to buy a fully heat synced, ready to uh, use, no SD card included, Raspberry Pi 1 Model B. I'm not sure if this is the 256 or the 512 meg version. I'm pretty sure it's the 512 meg version. I bought this about a year ago off of a buddy of mine who uh, lives in Colorado, uh, up in the mountains. He was strapped for cash, and uh, I said, okay, screw it, I'll buy it. And it ended up in my possession. Since then, I have turned it on a total of three times, and have never used it since. So... I am definitely going to have to either find it a home within the boundaries of YouTube or IRC or what have you, or I'm just going to have to sell it outright on Craigslist and see what I can I get for it. Because right now, the Model 2, the, you know, <sighs> the Raspberry Pi 2 models A and B are now currently out, and they are selling for the same price that the Raspberry Pi 1 Model A and B were selling for. So, that sort of makes it a little hard to sell this for a high price. Especially in a used condition with heat sinks. You know, you know, just perma glued on there. There's also one on the voltage regulator back here because that does get a little warm. You take a look at thermal uh, readouts for these boards. That is actually a spot that does tend to get warm. Uh, this is the main ship here, and this is the uh, combined, I think this is the Ethernet and USB chip or something along those lines. Not my bag. Not really my bag of chips. And then the 8GB SD card is going to go into the U right here. You poor, poor, abused DSCH70. Oh how I could have used you for months and months, but no, I had to go and had to get a Nokia, and I have been using it. So your charger has gotten lost in the abyss. The wide, wide abyss. Oh my god. You can tell I'm a little looped, because it's about 2.20 a.m. in the morning. I mean, is it really necessary for me to be making all of these little tiny clips like this? No, probably not. But it does make for good little sneak peeks as to what kind of videos I could be making next within the coming months. Just, just putting that out there, you know? 
nothing really so special in this pile of junk here. You know? Maybe. I seem to be having problems with this one. That's not a good sign. I was going to do a little segment here that showed the actual estimated runtime for the system that I currently have once the Optiplex 760 is completely taken out of the picture. But it seems that APC's website is a little bit on the wonky side tonight. And as I'm running out of just just running out of time being awake, I'm going to keep it for another day. But what I'm currently looking at is Estimated, hmm, I'm just going to have to say a few hours on battery. I'm just going to cut this short right here. Thanks for watching. See you later.